has come before the Lord and bring Wednesday to its beginning. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you were justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious Spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 63 You, God, are my God. <laughs> Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. <coughs> with singing lips my mouth will praise you. <coughs> On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. But you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouth of liars will be silenced. Psalm 90 Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting you were God. You turned people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death, they are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. 
Our days may come to 70 years, or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them have but trouble and sorrow, but they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that it is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants, satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad as all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendour to their children. May the favour of the Lord God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 to 23. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. Moses reached out and took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, Put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It had become as white as snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out it was restored, like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord, please, and send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, What about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He's already on his way to meet you, and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you and it will be as if it were your, he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take the staff in your hand so that you can perform the signs with it. Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. Jephro said, Go, and I wish you well. Now the Lord has said to Moses in Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all those who wanted to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt, and he took the staff of God in his hand. The Lord said to Moses, When you return to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you the power to do but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. And say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son, and I told you, 
let my son go, so that he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go, so I will kill your firstborn son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, <clears throat> you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering, and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O oh God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O oh God, I have sinned and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy, for all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God, the Most High, the Almighty. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. The law is only a shadow of the good things of the coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. Otherwise they would not have stopped, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all, and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. It's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me with burnt offerings and sins. You are not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them. They were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice he has made perfect for ever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. 
to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. <clears throat> and you, child, should be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Father God, we come before you on this strange day, on a day in which it seems we are destined to enter into a bit of a break. Well, Father, I thank you that as we come into a a period in this household of isolation and separation. Lord, all the plans of the days that we have have just gone out the window. And yet we can still worship you. We can still serve you. We can still praise you. So, Lord, for all of us today, whatever our plans, whatever may beset us, whatever may challenge us, we thank you that, in fact, everything Everything is born. Everything is good. Life is great. It's interesting. It's probably different. But you know, Lord, you give us the ability to serve. You give us the ability to love. And you give us the ability to overcome all things. So, Lord, for all we are, for all we are, with others, and all others are for us, we give you thanks this day. Lord, consecrate us on this day to your service, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, as we look at the world and its needs, there seems to be a theme going now, as the days continue and Russia continues to slowly destroy the Ukraine as the Ukrainians resist the Russians. So, Father, we, we look at that and we pray for peace, we pray for protection, especially for the Pop family and others that we know of, but for all people. <coughs> but, Lord, our prayers do not just cover the people we know. And we look at the things of the world, for the ununited states of America, and as they look at the presidential records for the 6th of January, the day when the Capitol riots occurred, it seems that there's a seven-hour gap in Mr. Trump's records. So many people have spoken of this man shredding things, and Lord... As we think of the government of America, as we think of the president and the power they in that post wield, we pray for all leaders that they would not shred evidence, that they would not lie, that they would not say things are not than they are. And Father, we pray that for our own government as the 
party gate scandal continues. <coughs> Sorry. We pray for Israelis. Five people were killed in an attack by a Palestinian government. Lord, we pray for peace between Palestine and Israel. Father, we pray for the divisions, for the building of more settlements and the reducing, the removing of people of Palestinian nationality from Israel. Lord, first the land is taken through blood guilt, sadly, and then the ersatz secular state of Israel occurs. Lord, we pray that Israel would be the spiritual body that Israel was, that it would be God's people. And Father, as we pray for Israel, we pray for every nation who has internal conflict as its lot at this time. Father, we look also towards the things in Latin America, the cartels, the dodgy governments, the awful divisions between rich and poor, between people in the same nation, same language. Father, we pray that there would be unity, there would be kindness, there would be grace and love shown to all people by all people in every nation. And Father, we pray, of course, for all that happens at this time in the Australia, the Antipodean continent, in fact, and South America, sorry, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, all the, all the chaos that is found pray for peace between China and India. We pray for so many of the struggles in Asia at this time. Lord, we pray especially for Africa and its divisions, for its conflicts, for its dodgy politics, for its perennial corruption Lord we pray for the world this day that it would be as it should be and that the nations of the world might acknowledge you, your love and all that is Lord in your mercy hear our prayer and Father we thank you that Senior archbishops, presiding bishops and moderators from each of the 41 Anglican provinces across the globe are gathering in London this week. Father, with the primates meeting, we pray that it would yield something that changes the world, that it would do something that makes Christ known. And Father God, as we Look at the church today, we pray that you, you would mobilize us, you would motivate us, you would make us a people, not of power, but of grace, a people with a voice, a people who stand for what is right, and a people who oppose that which is wrong in every way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the people on our hearts and minds this day, for the people who are struggling, for everything that is going on. And Lord, as I have a chest infection and a red stripe, Father, I thank you for the interesting experience ahead. Lord, may we kick in into touch as quick as we can. And uh, Father God, may... All the things that we have planned not fall to the ground because of all that is happening. So we pause and we pray for the people on our hearts and minds this day. 
<clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, you know our struggle to serve you. When sin spoils our lives and overshadows our hearts, come to our aid and turn us back to you again. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for being with us. We're here, but we can't go anywhere. We are locked in just for a while, which is great. If you want to come and look through the window, I'll post the times for feeding time, because it would be like a tea party at the chimpanzee monkey house at the London Zoo, which I used to enjoy so much as a child. And with that, I'll leave you to it for now. Bless you guys. Take care. Bye for now.